It is Super Nanny Saturday, and this week we are watching America's Super Nanny. The Carzell family was one of the largest families I have ever worked with. The major issues in the household was a lack of appropriate discipline. Nevada, stop. Boys wrestle, girls don't. It was barbaric. Both mom and dad spanked the kids with belts and sticks. It was absolutely extremely painful to watch. I'm not playing about this all the time. Now you're not laughing anymore. Right off the bat, we have so many similarities to the families that Joe Frost has worked with. We have a large family, first of all. Nothing new to us. We have yelling and spanking and hitting with a belt. I'm curious to see how does Deborah approach a situation like this versus what we're used to with Joe Frost. Before I go any further, you may be wondering what in the world is wrong with Kristen's voice? Well, I volunteered at my daughter's school earlier this week. The microphone wasn't working and I had to project my voice to about 150 students outside. I have lost my voice. I actually feel much better than I sound. The children were physically abusive to each other. They were particularly abusive to 11-year-old Nevada. <laughs> Shut up and eat dessert. Oh. Issue number two, a lack of respect and communication. The parents screamed and yelled at the kids. Go to bed, now. And the kids screamed and yelled at each other. You freaking idiot. The children did not respect authority at all. It seems like the children are just totally out of control. Sometimes I do believe they have to be, I believe hit. Notice how the children are exhibiting the same behaviors that the parents do to them. When a child is whining or doing anything that you don't want them to do and your action is to yell or hit them, I'll be the first to admit that behavior may indeed stop. It probably will stop because the child is either scared or they're in pain. But the problem happens when that child then begins to have conflict with others, such as their siblings or a classmate, or later on when they're an adult and they're at the grocery store, or they're cut off on the highway. They have learned, well, the way that we resolve conflict, the way that I stop somebody else's undesired behavior is I yell or hit them. And as you know, we can't just go around yelling and hitting people when they do things that we don't like. And unfortunately, parents can get stuck in this cycle because they don't know alternative discipline strategies and they don't want their kids to walk all over them. Of course, no one does. I do not practice permissive parenting. If you decide, I don't want to hit my, at my kids and I don't want to yell at them and that's all I've experienced in my own childhood, just know you don't have to. You never have to lift a finger. After getting the parents in order, it was important for me to get the children to stop bullying and being verbally abusive. So I put in place a family circle technique. This is our circle, circle of love. I want for you guys to just be really loving and caring and bring back the positivity in the household. By the end of the week, I was so excited to finally see this house become a home. What? That clip was so quick and we will be watching more clips as well as looking at updates on these families. And I even want to look up how long was this on the air and why was it canceled? I'm curious. If you're new here, I'm Kristen. I'm an educator and mom of two myself. I specialize in working with children who have behavioral challenges. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe. Welcome to the community. But for now, let's talk about this technique that Miss Tillman is putting in place. What she call it? The family circle of love? It's not about the consequences right now. And this, I love that they highlighted this because no matter what discipline program you put in place, if you don't marry it with some positivity, your child is going to eventually see you as a negative force in their life. Think about your own intimate relationships. If you're constantly being criticized over and over and over again, eventually you're like, F it. I can never do anything right anyway. Forget it. I'm not even going to try. 
This will start to happen as your child reaches like age seven, eight, nine, definitely preteen years and teenage years. They're like, I can't wait to get out of this house anyway because nothing is ever good enough for a mom. Nothing is ever good enough for a dad. So in order to avoid that using a technique like Ms. Tillman or using the technique of three to one for every one consequence, you're noticing three positive behaviors. I noticed you turned off the light when you left the bathroom. I noticed you grabbed your sister's water bottle for her when we were walking out the door. I noticed, I noticed exact behaviors that you want repeated. Tracy didn't set any limits or boundaries or guidelines for the children. None of the kids listened to her. Everybody goes to sleep. Stop. You do not hit your mother. Stop. No. Armani, you do not hit your sister. Dad was clueless and thought he was helping by getting today? the boys all wound up during his exercise regimen, but in fact made things worse. Can we just appreciate the faces that Deborah's making just like Joe during observation day? We've moved on from an authoritarian family to a permissive family. So from yelling and spanking and do as I say so to please don't do that. Don't do that. Both ends of the spectrum, both ineffective. Ah. For bedtime, boys had to sleep in their own bed. And actually the boys did very well with this technique. Mom and dad were totally shocked. This is great. So what do you want to do, take a vacation now? <laughs> <laughs> the listening bell served as a stimulus to get the boys to stop what they were doing and to come close to mom or dad, depending on who had the bell. So they do have ears. Of course they have ears. <laughs> <laughs> the stranger danger buddy up technique was used so that mom would be able to take the boys to the grocery store. There were a few techniques mentioned and the one I want to highlight is the bell technique. If you find yourself repeating yourself over and over and over again, and then you fall into the habit of yelling and you go, I have to yell, Kristen, unless nobody listens to me. It's likely because number one, you probably don't pause in between giving directions. Remember that a child's frontal lobe is not fully developed. They need a few seconds to have it register. So you say their name, Jonathan, and then they don't respond. Move your body a little bit closer, use proximity. And then when your child looks at you, you go, thank you for looking at me. When I call your name, I need you to look at me right away. Then number two, it leads me to role play. If you have a repetitive issue, practice it. I'm sure that out of nowhere, this bell didn't come out. I'm sure Miss Tillman went outside with the kids and she said, you hear this bell? Okay, when you hear this bell, that's going to need to come in. Let's practice it. Everybody pretend. Pretend like you're playing outside. Okay, uh, the bell. and then they run forward and then you sit, you praise and you notice and you go, wow, you came right away. Then there will still be kids because they're kids that are gonna push boundaries. It's a part of growing up. It's not to be mean to you. They still won't come. And that's when you attach a logical consequence. And you say, I'm going to ring the bell only two times. If you do not come by the second time, then after this, you will not be able to go as far out because I need to keep you safe and this bell is there to keep you safe. And I wanna be able to let you go all the way down the street with your bicycle. But if you can't hear the bell and you don't respond to that bell, I'm gonna to need to keep you a little bit closer until you're able to show me. Look who has decided to join us. I was about to start the next clip and then he came over crying for me for attention. Did you know you have a little fan club growing? The YouTube peeps want to see some spiffy sightings. Look at how big he is. Wish him my big boy. Oh, oh. <laughs> he loves my glasses. When I first met the Dentons, it was a house that was totally out of control. My dog pees and poops over there. The dog pees and poops over there? Uh -huh. This is a matter of health and safety. Yeah. Mom had given up on everything. Dad looked insecure and didn't know what to do. What are you doing to keep the family? I would say at this point, nothing.
and the children just watch TV like zombies all day. Wow, I didn't even mean to do this, but we have just hit the third ineffective parenting style, which is being neglectful. That's when you have almost no demands of your child, no expectations, and you're also not responsive. The parents are not doing anything. They're left to their own devices to whether literal devices, no pun intended with the TV, or also they were downstairs in the basement and there's just like toys everywhere. And the daughter said that the dog pees and poops in the corner. We want to remove the TV from your bedroom. All the inappropriate video games that you have, we have to pack all those up. It wasn't a very good parenting decision. And I know you're upset, but it's for the best. With this entire family, there were a lot of techniques that we had to put in place. There was a lot of work that had to be done in terms of communication. We actually saw progress. Notice how when dad sits down with his son and he goes, hey, we're going to take the TV out of your room and we're going to take away these violent video games. There's an underlying sense of care and comfort and love and empathy because this child is heartbroken. It's not crocodile tears. He has been getting dopamine and love from screens that have not been provided by friends and family. So taking it away is like a withdrawal from alcohol and drugs for him. It hurts. It's not something that's easy. If you find your own children in a pattern of unhealthy behaviors and you go, hey, we're, we're headed down a path, supporting your child and replacing those things with healthy behaviors is going to make it's so much easier on them and it's also giving them a skill that they can use later in life. Let me explain that. Let's say they're on screens all the time. Just saying to your child, hey, you need to stop, you need to cut it out with the screens and you don't help them find ways. That's my refrigerator, I don't know if you could hear it. And you don't help them find ways to get that feel good feeling. They're just going to feel ugly and sad and they may even get angry at you like how dare you take away the one thing that makes me happy so setting up a schedule and going okay we're gonna have screen time during this time screen time during that time what would you rather do video games in the morning or video games in the afternoon giving them a little bit of autonomy and then during the rest of the schedule helping them to find things that make them feel good. Maybe they figure out they like to paint. Maybe they figure out they like to crochet. Maybe they figure out a new sport that they like or you set them up with something outside. The Carzell family update. The only thing I can find from this family was this GoFundMe that was made in 2017. It says family survived car crash. It looks like Sam, his wife, and four of the children were in an accident. It does say that everyone survived, which I'm happy to hear. Some update though that I found within it was Sam and his wife are proud parents of 12 children. The Greg family update, just like the previous family, there is a wiki but it doesn't have any updates. I'm assuming this is because America's Super Nanny wasn't as popular as the original Super Nanny, so let's check out the last family. The Denton family, also no updates on the wiki. America's Super Nanny ran beginning in 2011 with season one. Season two was 2013, and then it looks like it ended. Reddit is also wondering why did America's Super Nanny get canceled and why hasn't it come back? Jules Eastwood says Americans do not like being told what to do or how to raise them, their children. Uh, I'd imagine that's an opinion because Super Nanny was a bully. I wonder if they're referring to Joe Frost or Deborah Tillman. I didn't see a lot of bullying uh, with Deborah Tillman and I... Although I would certainly not call Joe Frost a bully, there there are moments when I go, mm, when, you know, the way that she talks to the kids or the parents. Maybe they didn't want to do it anymore after they got mocked by South Park. Interesting. Low ratings would be guess. Me too. I think that for the most part, shows are produced 
for money. And if they're not making enough money, they don't continue it. I'd like to end with a quote. It says, children don't say, I had a hard day, can we talk? They say, will you play with me? As most of us will be spending more time with our children during the summer than we do during the school year, it can feel overstimulating, frustrating, and just hard. Remember when your kids look at you and they say, look at me, mommy, look at me, or look at me, daddy. It's because they want you to look at them. You are so special in their eyes and you are doing a wonderful job. I hope to see you again next time. Bye.